And in the beta, you have a blue screen where you error out, fine, it's a beta. You have um, armor issues, some are too strong, some are too easy to find, some it just, it, it's too game breaking, so what? Okay, guns, sometimes don't work, shotguns, don't work. You know what this, all this means, all these negatives? Nothing, because everybody is extremely happy to play it. Everybody is so happy. I'm mad that I'm talking into this camera instead of playing the video right now, the video game. Blackout 4 is not only the savior, but it's also the revival of Call of Duty. So joining Optic, um, there was a lot of high hopes for this roster. Like we had, like on paper, we were the best team in NA. Everyone was hyping us up, obviously. We were very confident ourselves. Our first placement in tournament, we qualified for uh, the PGI and A LAN. That was like before I got signed with Optic. Um, it was kind of like a trial phase and we qualified for that LAN. Then we went to the BYLC and DreamHack, qualified for that, did very well. So with those two major like, um, just feature like feats basically before I got signed there was a lot of high hopes a lot of ups going into Kiev uh, Star Ladder season two there's the competition of there was is pretty much worldwide we had the Korean teams Asian teams and all that stuff so the moving from we basically had like we spoke in the last episode that we uh, PUBG was in was Vegas and then our success in curse trials winning that um, monthly tournament. Then afterwards, we pretty much prepped a lot. It, it prepped it a little bit differently because there's a bunch of Asian teams and Korean teams and the meta in, in their field is way different than from what we're used to, the European and the NA. So we prepped a lot for that. Um, things kind of started off really well in, in stage one. I think our day one and day two in stage one were, were quite comfortable. Um, we won two games on the first day of stage one, which was a, a massive confidence boost. That kind of goes back to, the, we did the same thing at IEM. Um, so it's kind of cool to get back to kind of that form on LAN. I mean, stage one, day three, we, we had a, a really rough time. Um, I think we, we dropped quite far down on the leaderboard. So leading into the last day of stage one, um, I think we were outside of top eight um, and we needed a couple of teams to do really badly for us to even stand a chance to get into uh, the top eight. Luckily, we made it through in top eight. We learned a lot in the group stages because it was the first time that I myself has played against the Korean team in a long time because uh, their meta has shifted and developed drastically. So we made it through the group stages. Um, we had a pretty good start going into the finals of Star Ladder. We, we had a giant 20 kill game bomb. Um, we won another game in Miramar as well later in the in the series just to close the little gaps. Unfortunately, we, we ended Star Ladder in, I believe, 12th place, which is our worst, play, worst placing yet. But unfortunately, the end of it just wasn't enough. And uh, it, it, I feel the whole event really was, I mean, the most difficult way to word it is it was a wasted opportunity. Uh, it was the first time we'd, we'd played, like I said, with um, the Asian team since we'd been in Korea back in February. Um, and again, there, there were a lot of eyes on that tournament and uh, there's obviously still this contestion for kind of, you know, the best team in NA. Um, obviously, EU have their favourites. Um, between NA, it's kind of us, Tempo, Ghost, and uh, again, the new Cloud9 roster. Um, so for me, it was, it was really disappointing to come out with arguably the best opportunity to prove ourselves as the best team in NA. And we kind of threw that away. Um, but again, stage two was kind of down to us. It, it wasn't really, you know, that we, we got unlucky. We, we just, uh, we didn't play our game, unfortunately. Uh, it was definitely heartbreaking um, going into it because after the group stages, we were warmed up in Milan. We were so confident in the changes we could make. We knew, even though this was like the best competition, even like from PGI Worlds, the, the competition here blows that out of the water. This was literally like the best teams the tournament's had. 10 out of the 16 teams has won like an international international championship at this land. So we were going into it, even not even thinking about that. We were full confident in our, in our team moving forward. It sucks uh, having the performance we had, especially with like the confidence we had going into it, starting off with the 20 bomb in Miramar and just emotions running high, just feeling good. So leaving that tournament, um, 
I mean, everyone's pretty much like sad about it, uh, obviously, because you never want a 12th placement. But I mean, everyone's pretty much disappointed just for the fact that we were so confident going into it. Uh, afterwards, right now, I mean, the only thing I can say, obviously, you get knocked down, you you get picked back up. I don't want to just beat myself over like maybe bad calls that were made in the tournament over and over again. The best thing I could do is just get knocked down and learn from it. Um, I learned a lot in the tournament. There's a lot of top teams in Korea and Asia. They have different metas. I think there's things that we could take away from our meta and their meta to to pretty much. I don't know, create like a good flow of things with different circles and different map, like the Miramar and the Wrangle. So hopefully I could just, we could go back, we're going back to the drawing board now, thinking about how we want to play the game, maybe take a different approach because it wasn't working or it might not be as consistent. Um, so right now we're just thinking about a bunch of different things. Uh, there's a lot going on in our head, especially with upcoming tournaments. So we're just going back to the drawing board and trying to switch things up. So we, we've got an opportunity now to um, kind of reset. We, we have, uh, actually, our, our DOL Season 3 starts uh, this evening, today. Um, so that's going to be running for another six weeks. Uh, the other thing's kind of going on in PUBG right now, uh, which we're going to be working towards. We've got uh, the next awesome Premier League uh, starting up in, I think, I think the next four weeks or so. Um, but basically just getting back on the grind now. Uh, we've got Face It up and running on um, PUBG, which is... A really good opportunity to kind of, you know, play play with other pro players and 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 queue into kind of you know the, the closest thing to, I guess, competitive games outside of scrims or, or leagues and tournaments. So, um, I mean, certainly for me, it's it's just getting back on back on the grind, back to the days where it was kind of leaderboard grinding. Um, I think that's that's kind of the, the best thing we can do right now is, is kind of dust off and, and wait for our next event. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know when that is. Uh, there's a PGO and uh, I think an Invitational um, next month, but we still don't know invites for that. I think as of today, they've announced uh, Liquid, which is kind of a given that they'll be invited to it. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, we, we just have to get back on the grind and wait for our next event, really. Even though sixth place, some people would deem good for land, it's not what we're about. Like, we're about winning. Uh, we're about getting championships and trying to take these titles home and take these trophies back to the case. So it's definitely been a struggle uh, for me, especially being an in-game leader, because uh, PUBG is just so, there's just so much into it. There's 50, it's not just like most games where you have like one team to worry about. You could study their strats, you could study their rotations, study exactly if they stack a site like CS and stuff. You have to worry about 15 teams and there's ever changing things due to like vehicle spawns, circle shifts. So there's just so much that goes into people's heads. Obviously you have four strong-minded um, individuals on our team. So a lot of people have different ideas on how to play the game and their shifts on what they want to do here. So it's definitely hard to take in a lot of that into consideration when it comes to like on the spot land performance and day to day changing strats. So as far as like myself individually, I've been going through a big learning process. I think I'm improving drastically as a player just because I'm learning so much. Even though it sucks losing this much, I mean, in the end, it's a good thing because you learn a lot more from losing than winning. And I had a lot of we've had a lot of accomplishments in the past, um, even me on my previous team. So just taking this fall, pretty much, it's not really like a fall, but for us, if you're not winning championships, it, it kind of is. Um, it's just, I just see myself improving drastically as a player. There's a lot of doubts in my head, obviously, when people compete, whether it be in sports and other things, a lot of it's mental. Like a lot of people say, like for boxing or something, they might say, it's 90% mental, 10% physical. And a lot of people would just be like, nah, that's not really true. People go in the gym, work hard, but when you actually are in this scenario and you're going through these struggles and everything, you realize like, it's pretty much like you're against yourself. So there's a lot of things that are going to my head and, and the teams and we're talking about like ways to switch it up, ways to come back stronger and ways to improve moving, moving forward. So um, these ups are gonna be a lot better uh, because of the downs, obviously. It's more the taste of winning just feels that much better and the strive and hunger just keeps on growing and growing if you're having struggles. So moving forward, we're just trying to change things up and looking looking forward to the future. Personally for me, um, the next kind of three months or so, uh, I, I, still think, I still think we owe the Greenwall a, a championship, um, especially before Pro League starts. So uh, personally for me, that's, that's a huge goal coming out of um, Again, arguably our, our worst land performance. Um, that kind of makes that even 
even more motivating for me now to go back and kind of deliver on that. Um, it'd be really nice before Pro League starts with kind of you know the grey area of what's going to happen with the endemic tournament organisers for PUBG. Um, it'd be nice to take away a championship coming into Pro League. That'll be a, a huge confidence boost for season one. Unfortunately, uh, and I say unfortunately, um, Octane ended up not not staying with the team. Uh, as you guys know, this is always something that's done internally. It's not, you know, uh, I, from the beginning of time, I've always made it a rule, sort of, that, that the players are the ones that make the decisions. One, um, you know, it, it, it makes them be accountable for themselves and they can't push that on somebody else. And we, we just can't make certain decisions if it affects the business from a sponsorship standpoint because if it wasn't for the fans and the sponsors, like none of this would, would go around, you know, this, this world wouldn't turn. Uh, in this case, however, it was something different. We just didn't have a successful year. And we're not gonna talk about that, okay, because it never happened. Um, but yeah, I, I really like Octane. Obviously his skill is, is is amazing. It's, it's one of, he's one of the best ARs, top three, definitely best ARs ever. Uh, he found a good home with the little brother uh, Nate Shot at 100 Thieves. Um, so, it, you know, at least I'm happy for for him that, that he's got that that opportunity, you know, to, to be a part of the second best uh, organization out there. Um, Great walls that have fallen throughout history, and now you can add the green wall to that pile. Ladies and gentlemen, Optic Gaming have been eliminated from COD Champs. Going into the offseason, my plan was, I don't even know, I was just in shock. Like, I couldn't believe what just happened. I couldn't believe that we got knocked out that early. And, you know, I'm, I'm sort of like a person that believes, like, you know, if you got second, third, fourth, that doesn't even matter. Like, you either win the tournament or you lose the tournament. And this placing was just like, Jesus Christ. Like, I couldn't believe how bad, you know, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I just, I didn't even know what to say. So I guess my plan for the off season was to just regain almost. Like, just just pretty much put the past behind me, uh, you know, focus on the, the future and pretty much, uh, I don't even know. Like, I was, I was actually pretty pissed. Uh, for I'm, I'm still pissed about it and I think that you know, I've been going to the gym for probably like two to three hours a day um, you know an hour of that's maybe like cardio or whatever but it's just like I'm just still so angry about the whole situation because you know we were not a top 24 team at that event and you know it just it just sucks for you know like your legacy your you know your financial situation because we didn't make anything there i think we got we pretty much got like pity money and it was just a, a huge disappointment and a huge like speed bump in my uh in my career Shit on, bro. Dude, what the fuck is this? Bro. Oh, shit. Bro, deployment pending. I'm fucking stupid, man. My opinion on the game, I, I haven't played too much of the, the actual multiplayer beta, just the blackout beta. Uh, but, you know, the game everything is pretty much amazing from how it runs how your movement feels uh sound gameplay gun gunfights are like real like i noticed like i'll get in a gunfight and at least in the blackout beta i'll get in a gunfight and strafing uh, comes into play a lot and i think that you know that that's really good for call of duty uh world war ii didn't really have strafing you were either on a head glitch or you weren't and you were either, you, you know, getting naded or throwing a nade. And it's just like little things like that, are, it's not really fun to watch. And I think that, you know, sliding and, and jumping and all fast movement is fun to watch if it can be followed. So uh, AW Hardpoint, you know, fun to, fun to play. Uh, not that fun to watch because it just looked like a spam fest. So I think that if Black Ops 4 nails that, that uh, dynamic of being fast, but not too fast, 
I think that'd be really good. World War II, way too slow, so. That's just my personal opinion. That's my two cents. Uh, I really think that COD sort of needs like a refresh in terms of pretty much everything. Uh, I think that, you know, Blackout coming out is really good for Call of Duty. You know, zombies, you know, Treyarch, like, Jesus, we're, we're back. COD lives, boys, COD lives. Um, but yeah, speaking on terms of 4v4, 5v5, I really feel like, you know, I played a little bit of the multiplayer beta, so I can't really talk too much about this but I feel like the maps were a little bit big, um, at least the ones we played, right? So I think that most of the maps that we played, I'm hoping that they were like the, you know, the average level maps because there's a whole bunch of more, there's way more maps coming out and a lot of them are remakes of very popular maps. The amount of rumors that are going on, whether it's gonna be a 5v5 or 4v4, has everybody nervous, including me, including this organization. I don't know, and, and we are close to a month, or, or yeah, close to a month, a month and a half away from going to Vegas for the first MLG event um, of the of the blackout or the black blackout of the black Black Ops 4 season. That we should by now know whether or not it's going to go 5v5 or if it's 4v4. What does it matter? If it, my theory is this: if it wasn't going 5v5. Or if it wasn't a possibility, wouldn't they have said, we're sticking to 4v4? Right, because nothing changes. And it wouldn't mean anything for them. But the fact that they're not saying anything is saying a lot, in my opinion. Uh, so I don't know. And, and from an organizational standpoint, how do you prepare for something like that? So I'd look, look, just throw it up in the air and see what's up, man. But it is a little bit stressful that, that we have to deal with that. So I'm really hoping that the maps are more catered to 5v5. I have no, I have no question that 5v5 SND is going to be amazing. Okay, no question. Um, just playing games like Counter Strike, Rainbow Six is 5v5. Pretty much, I think the one round or the one life game modes 5v5 is going to be incredible. I think if we're playing like Uplink. Uh, or some other game mode than CTF, then that's gonna be incredible. Uh, the only question is Hardpoint. I really, this this is gonna be an unpopular opinion, but playing, uh, what is it, Control, I felt like that was a lot better than what Hardpoint is because, and, and it's like, Control is like pretty much like domination, but the, the, the zones are a lot bigger. They're a lot bigger. And uh, you know, you can't really get pre-nated all too much, so or not pre-nated, but like nade spots and stuff on sites. Um, but yeah, I feel like the like hard point is like we're hanging on a hard point for no other reason than the fact that it was good in Black Ops 2 and it was, you know, somewhat decent in AW. Uh, for the other, you know, years, it was kind of, it's, 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 it's like a shell of what it was. And I think that we're just holding on to something that, you know, we, we really need to be playing what, what the majority of players need to be playing. Besides TDM, obviously, because can't really do that. Uh, but I really think that, you know, we should look into other games, especially with Treyarch, you know, there's a whole bunch of game modes coming out, I'm assuming. I know there's like a CSGO style, like money S&D situation or like a, like a bank round situations. But I think that we really need to look into uh, other game modes other than Hardpoint because clearly, you know, pub kids don't really like Hardpoint. The casual community doesn't really understand it. It's hard to watch. So we need a refresh of what Call of Duty is, what competitive Call of Duty is. And I think that, you know, 5v5 is it. I think that bringing new game modes is it. New rosters, hey, you're gonna see teams pretty much like disappear. And by teams, I mean organizations. And you know, it sucks for like the, the lower tier organizations because pretty much like, I'm, I believe they're in a situation where they probably couldn't salary their players as much as other like higher tier organizations could. And pretty much those, those higher tier organizations are gonna like build a roster. And the thing is like getting five people is a lot harder than getting four people. And then you have situations where there's players that are gonna be stuck on like like the 4v4 teams. Like there's gonna be players that like franchise players that are stuck. Pretty much like me and Seth, like we're on Optic pretty much until we retire. So for example, like the, if, you're on a, if you're a franchise player on a lower tier org, then it's gonna suck for you. Like, because it's just gonna be harder to get players versus, you know, being able to be traded to higher tier organizations. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I think there's really gonna be like five, no, I would say like four, 
maybe three or four teams that are like considered like super tier teams or like tier one teams. Uh, then I think there's going to be like tier two teams that have like, you know, three to four amazing players, but then they couldn't get a fifth that was like at that level with them. So they they might have to, you know, look downwards in, in the in the Call of Duty uh, ladder, I guess you could say, for uh, players. And I think that, you know, that's obviously going to suck for them. But at the end of the day, it's it's kind of hard to watch a non-consistent game in terms of esports and tournaments. Um, you don't really like, for example, us getting Optic getting knocked out. Well, actually, we sucked the whole year, so I'm this is a bad example. But like Phase, for example, they got they won season two, then they got like top twelve like twice, then they got top six, and then they got like third at champs. Like they it, it was doing this all year long, and that's I I think that's bad for Call of Duty. I think that's bad for esports. I think consistency is key. Uh, and I think that 5v5 will probably probably promote that so you know I have I have personal goals I'm not gonna say anything you know team goals because honestly I'm just I want to show up have fun you know hopefully win some tournaments and uh, pretty much just try to get back on track try to get back on track I think that that's that's my goal that's that, that's my goal for the team too.